It was a dark, cold night in the tower. I was sitting in my office, sorting through my gear, when a knock came at my door. A warlock walked in, dressed head to toe like a dinosaur. I assumed she gave me a look through that helmet. A tilt of her head said she wanted something. She ascended her Eververse patented Atheon chair. What can I do for you? I say. She turns her horn to me. I hear you're the best hunter on the tower, willing to take on any challenge. I emo to her to indicate that I am the guy. Okay, honey, this is just taking too long, Jack. Half the audience aren't gonna get the joke. I raise my brow. Her words cut me deep. Dear, just stop. Just get the video rolling. We want to see this challenge so we can go back to farming. Fine. <clears throat> Insert transition here. So the newest expansion Lightfall is here for Destiny 2. You got The Witness, you got Callus, you got Strand, and a city in the cradle of a gas giant. But you know what? My Guardian's taking a vacation to the swamps and turreted towers of Savathun's throne world. Welcome to beating Destiny 2 Witch Queen with random loadouts. I wanted to make this spoiler free for Lightfall, but obviously spoilers for Witch Queen. So we were stepping back a year to when the Witness was just a name and the light was still ours. The rules for this run are simple. We are playing through the Witch Queen campaign on legendary difficulty, because I always play on the highest difficulty, so you should get used to that by now. Second rule on the docket, every mission we randomize our loadout, so weapons, armor, ghost, and subclass. Finally, I cannot mod anything. I have to use it exactly as it's given to me. Obviously, there are some things that have mods or whatnot on them, but otherwise it stays as is. Hint, since armor overhaul happened, I have not put any mods on most of my stuff. So originally, I wanted this challenge to be my loadout changes every minute. And I learned how to use the Destiny API, built an integration, only to find out you can't use the API to equip weapons and activities. Well, I settled for the next best thing, randomizing my loadouts between missions. I'll be using my hunter, because that is what I decided randomly. Get it? Get it? Uh-huh? 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 So my vault is pretty diverse. I like to keep it neat, but with one weapon of each type. Sounds like it will be easy if that's the case. Well, it's not easy, because with the launch of Lightfall, my vault has been thrown into chaos. You like that? Building suspense? Setting the stage, if you will? Tonight's show, The Torment of Jackie XE, starring myself. Anyway, now that your ticket is punched for the show and the buildup is done, let us begin. I roll my first loadout. It's not too bad, actually. The only downside is there's two special weapons, so I gotta deal with special ammo a lot. First, the light provides solar, which is probably my favorite subclass. We got the new strand sniper rifle with the ability to birth threadlings from the noggins of enemies. A shotgun from the dawning. It's pretty and it complements our subclass. Finally, a grenade launcher from the season of the lost, which would be quite useful with the grenade launcher buffs. Armor isn't great, but it could be worse. At least I got a couple of my main gear pieces. Of course, a little present from Spider that I kept snuck in. Looks great. Ghost and I touched down on Mars since it mysteriously reappeared from the it Destiny content vault. The plan? Become a bullet and board the HR Geiger craft. Cannon. We doomslayer our way on board without much issue. Back up. Have a weapon. Afraid to use it. Oh, hello. Bleh. I'm a bullet now. Look at me, mom. All right, here we go into the big gun. All right, ghost, shoot me up. Bye. Whee! We find some hive instead of xenomorphs, but that's probably a good thing. Can you imagine if they got the light? The thought of ghost facehuggers sounds like something I would keep away from Bungie's Eververse team. Anyway, we squish a ghost without even talking to it. God, the two sentient machines of the light can't communicate to tell each other what's going on. To feel better about ourselves, we steal some tickets from tourists going to see Sabathun's throne world and head on in. Tribute, please. Thank you. Come here, Sabby. It's such a beautiful park, and Savathun is so generous. There she is! It's the Witch Queen! Get wrecked, Savathun. 
Oh, loot! Now, can I have that chest? Listen, you know I'm a loot whore. You just hand it over. Uh, no, please. Just a little bit closer. They can almost... Wow, I can't believe I stole from paying customers to visit this dump. With that, mission one is complete. Now this seemed easy so far, but given the majority of my items are low level, I won't be really keeping up with the light level of the missions. Plus I got some stinkers in there like my Festival of the Lost Mask, which has zero light level. Please, Gods of Chaos, be kind. Mission two, we got some decent stuff. A pistol I forgot about, ritual fusion rifle weapon, and Grandma's Ingredient Extractor. Ark is always a good time, and I got some okay armor. Dat 6 Coyote will be helpful. Ghost and I return to the park, hoping to find out more about what's going on here. We meet a new friend, Finch, who tells us to keep our heads down. Completely ignoring his warnings, we touch a random orb of power, and then we can see ghosts, no sorry, psychic imprints. With this mysterious new power in hand, getting open the gate to the Finch is our next big hurdle. Ow. Oh, they blew up my sparrow. You see, standing still on a plate isn't great on legendary. They throw a lot of grenades. Like, a lot. We speed to the next area, where we must battle Scorn and Dem steroided out Hive Knights. Oh, thank you. Ah! This has improved too hard, and that's mission two. What do you think, Finch? I was just thinking about, uh, you know, all that stuff with uh, Neptune. It's pretty cool. I know you're stuck here, and oh, never mind. Bye. Mission three is where things heat up. For weapons, we got the new Strand Auto Rifle, a crafted weapon I quickly tossed into my vault, and the new exotic machine gun, Deterministic Chaos. Our chosen subclass is Stasis, which I never really unlocked fragments or aspects for, so it's pretty bare bones. For armor, it's not the best, but it'll do. I ain't got no dust field grenades, so Renewal's Grasp is pretty much just normal armor. Finch gave us a tip to go deeper into the depths of the throne world, to find Osiris's ghost shell. Again, psychic imprints and all that. Woo! The hive give us a run for our money to start off with. No! You, sir, are a dead man. And so am I. I show them how to make order from chaos. What am I, an anime villain? <laughs> Moving on. We take down a fallen tank that was scorned by its lover, and we make our way into the depths. All right, into a random hole. Here we face the boss from the presage mission. Big guy with fire flail. To kill him, we gotta smash some rocks. At this point, I wish a hammer was an exotic heavy weapon, and not just for titans. This section is where things get hard. We move on to the real boss fight once we destroyed the holistic crystal shop. Turns out the shop had a warehouse in the back full of crystals, so it's time to get to work. Okay, run. No! Nope, 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 nope. Die! Come back here! There he's at. 
Whoa, that was hard. It goes pretty poorly, but we end up on top and take our prize. In the meantime, what should we do with Sagira? Now we come to the section where I wanted to die. Mission four consists of us re-entering the pyramid from beyond light. However, I had to do this twice because my recording failed. I didn't realize it until it was complete. Not saying it was an easy run the first time either, but I would have preferred it to the second one. Our role is once again stasis, paired with a stasis pistol, my favorite crafted weapon, and the lament. While I love the lament, swords are in a weird place in this run. Pretty much getting close to anyone means death. Armor is pretty awful, and again there is an exotic I cannot use. Touching down on Europa, I learned to hate Cabal tanks once again. The fact that they can one-shot you or curve rockets are on a rock is crazy to me. I'm going to have a talk with Keitel. Look, can you leave the bad tanks in a spot your deserters can take them instead of the good ones? I die a fair few times doing the dance of death with the tanks. No. <laughs> You, what? You gotta be kidding me. No! Tank, one tank down. Before you say anything, cowardice is a perfectly fine strategy when applied correctly. One down. Oh, my dreams are almost shattered. There we go. Jesus Christ. Once inside the pyramid, I make my way to the first boss area. Normally this guy is pretty straightforward, however, Given that we have the Lament and there are tons of enemies in the room, it is not. Oh! Well, that worked, but... Eventually, with the help of a little jolt of electricity, Link. I take him down and move on to his big brother. It's on me. This guy isn't the issue. It's the sheer number of ads in the arena, and also my lack of recovery. No! Eventually I make it through at the cost of my sanity. Here's hoping this doesn't happen again. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself, sorry. I feel like I've abused this meme. Mission five, probably the easiest one. Well, except for the mulligan. Oh, that may mean uh, mulligan. Yeah, I had no idea that being below the power cap meant enemies are invincible. Well, our second roll is a bit better. Void with the side of long range, and that pesky retrofit escapade. Bungie took you from us too soon. Armor is also awesome, with some of my actual main pieces, wow! This mission is all about spelunking, with the only main fight being a final cave auditorium. Seriously, Savathun's mind be whack sometimes. 
Can't relate to that. Bring it on. Oh, thank God. Beat back the scorn and play a perspective puzzle straight out of a jumpstart education game. Really dating myself with that one. Next on our agenda, time to become archaeologists and raid a childhood trauma, I mean temple to Siphona. This mission we get the Huckleberry, an okay solar bow, and a meh grenade launcher. Armor is again pretty bad, and we got Renewal's Grasp again. Do I look like I'm using dust field grenades? We make our way past the Scorn without any trouble, and make our way through the Savathun Bridge of Fun. This wild ride consists of, you guessed it, jumping. I don't technically have any glamour, but... We make our way across, lower the drawbridge, super cool set piece by the way, and make our way into the room with the statue we were looking for. It's guarded by an entire battalion of Scorn and they are hungry for guardian flesh. What an idiot. Oh, thank God. Worm. Bro, it's Raven. After being ripped apart a few times, Savathun decides to put a home movie on the projector. Of course, normally the home movies aren't 10 feet tall, snarl, and spit at you repeatedly. You've gotta be kidding. We managed to end the home movie after several attempts by shooting the fast forward button many times. It's then a race to the finish for our prize. Remember kids, be kind and rewind. Bink. Oh, we have more than enough time. Ghost, guardian, come in. All right. Of course, this is where we put the strike into the campaign. But since you can't select the difficulty of the strike or have it not match made, I decided to skip it. Instead, we embark on Eris's wild ride. Our tools, solar, strand SMG, Lorenz driver, and stasis rocket launcher. At this point, armor is barely worth talking about. It all sucks because I've been playing through the campaign. I have just accrued so much garbage that I get that instead. We lockpick our way through the turrets and pathways of the throne world, stopping only to show a hive hunter who's the real solar boss. That's my job, dickhead. Lorenz Driver is such a good gun, so it's carrying us hard here. The first speed bump is opening the gates into Savathun's laboratory. She's keeping more crystals, so we have to once again clean her out. The gatekeepers don't take kindly to storming their gates, so they put up a fight. No! Blech. Oh. 
Oh yeah. With the gatekeepers taking a dirt nap and the gates open, we venture into the lab. We climb to the top through the various scientists. They had guns. Here we encounter a high wizard in charge of evil experiments, or they may just be a janitor. I'm, I'm not sure. In either case, we engage in some challenging combat. those frisbees oh he's finishable come here baby come here squishy squash applesauce eventually we get the upper hand and the crystal collection is ours <laughs> now we are ready to face the butterfly herself. Chaos hands me the tools we must use for the final mission. Arc, Malfeasance, a solar scout rifle that I immediately dismantled after filming, and Temptation's Hook. Happy to have Temptation's Hook here, because although it's a sword, at least it's ranged. The only armor of note here is the Liar's Handshake, which actually pairs with our subclass for once. Yay! We make our way to the entrance of the Throne World Keep. Above us, the Traveler looms. Don't worry, old girl. We'll save you from the people you actually chose to rescue you from the Witness. Ikora helps us break down the front door as we make our way to the first big encounter. This is a tricky one, requiring brains and brawn, which we have in spades, so I calmly make it through this part. Definitely not internally panicking at every moment. Just remember the door patterns, break more crystals, go into the door with the patterns, get a scary beach ball, rinse and repeat. This is it. Uh, oh, thank God. Ooh. Yes. Oh, oh, we did it. Finally, we square off with the Witch Queen herself, which goes surprisingly well. Turns out Malfeasance really hurts her. Weird that she isn't taken. I have learned a lot of patience from the previous levels, so I sit back and try not to take risks. Halfway there, whoa, savvy is a square. Take my hand, she'll kill us, I swear. Yes, sir. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Nope. Go. Go. Range, baby. Oh, Lord. Fish time. Phase two is what I hinted at earlier. This is the part I really struggled on. To start things off, we unravel her web around the Traveler, making it be able to return to Earth. Oh, get wrecked. Traveler's free, baby. But before it does, we have one final showdown with the Witch Queen. This was already a hard boss fight when I did it with just Mira, but this time it turned into a nightmare. savathun has been hitting the juice, and I don't mean steroids. Her lightning is deadly. I really am quiet for most of this as I concentrate super hard. One wrong move and it's a one-hit KO. 
<laughs> no. That's that. The Witch Queen is dead. For now. As we watch the Traveler whisk her ghost away into the final shape, I can finally breathe a sigh of relief. And that's it. We beat the Witch Queen campaign using only random loadouts. Honestly, it was a fun challenge. A lot harder than I thought it would be. Finally starting to flex those Destiny sea legs. Before I go, many of us Destiny fans know we recently lost Lance Redrick, the voice of Zavala. This video is dedicated to him and all the work he did for the Destiny community. Eyes up, Guardian. You will be missed. When we will be tested. When all we hold dear is threatened. And then we will see what each of us is truly made of. I hope you guys enjoyed the run, and I will see you next time.